What moves markets? It's a fundamental question that every professional trader should consider. Perhaps the shortest answer is supply and demand. If demand for an instrument is high and supply is short, the price will inevitably rise. If the converse is true, the price will fall. But how can we evaluate what is happening with supply and demand, especially in the forex market, which is decentralized and not overly transparent? One method we can utilize is to use price data to get a handle on how money is flowing in and out of an instrument. And one of the more popular tools for doing this is the Money Flow Index. The Money Flow Index is a momentum indicator that measures the flow of money into and out of a security over a specified period of time. It is related to the Relative Strength Index, but incorporates volume whereas the RSI only considers price. For this reason, some analysts call the MFI the volume-weighted RSI. The money flow index is calculated by accumulating positive and negative money flow values, then creating a money ratio. The money ratio is then normalized into the MFI oscillator form. The indicator is typically calculated using 14 periods of data and uses price and volume and the concept of accumulation and distribution, being quite helpful in confirming trends in prices and warning of potential reversals in prices. So how to read the money flow index? When current typical price, meaning the high, low and close divided by 3, is higher than the previous typical price, it is considered positive money flow. When current typical price is lower than the previous typical price, it is considered negative money flow. Positive money flow represents the sum of the positive money over the specified number of periods. Negative money flow represents the sum of negative money over the specified number of periods. The money flow index indicates the percentage of positive money flow compared to the total money flow. MFI reading over 80 is considered overbought and MFI reading below 20 is considered oversold. However, if you followed my channel, you probably know by now that overbought and oversold doesn't necessarily mean the price will reverse. It means only that the price is near the high or the low of its recent price range. The creators of the indicator recommend using 90 and 10 levels as overbought and oversold levels. These levels are rarely reached, but when they are, it often means the price could be due for a direction change. The MFI and RSI are very closely related. The main difference is that the MFI incorporates volume, while the RSI doesn't. Traders relying mainly on volume analysis believe it's a leading indicator. Therefore, they also believe that the MFI will provide signals and warn of possible reversals in a more timely fashion than the RSI. One indicator is not better than the other, they are simply incorporating different elements and therefore providing signals at different times. But as it incorporates volume, the money flow index might give you the extra edge you need when you try to predict future price movements. Ok, now let's see how to trade with the MFI indicator. As the money flow index is quite similar to the RSI, the indicator can be used in a similar way. The MFI can offer traders several signals, the main of them being overbought and oversold conditions and divergences. Moves below 10 and above 90 are quite rare. When the MFI is above 90, the price is overbought, and a reversal or a pullback could potentially occur. When the MFI is below 10, the price is oversold and the reversal or pullback might be recorded on the market. It's important to remember that simply because a market reaches overbought or oversold levels doesn't mean that prices will immediately reverse in the opposite way. During periods of strong upward trends or downward trends, market can and will remain in overbought or oversold areas for weeks or even months. That's why when the money flow hits or exceeds values of 90 or 10, you shouldn't blindly enter counter trend positions. You need to pay extra attention to price action, to recent market swings, to key support and resistance levels, and if you spot some sort of confluence, 
then you should consider entering into a trade. The MFI should never be used on its own as a trade signal and must be used in conjunction with other tools of analysis to make better informed trading decisions. Traders who use volume in their analysis often look for divergences between volume and price. If volume is trending one way while price is trending in the opposite direction, it could be a leading indication of an upcoming change in the direction of the market. For example, if the price is making higher highs and the MFI fails to make new highs or falls, this is a bearish divergence and can be used as a sell signal. Alternatively, if the price makes new lows but the MFI fails to record new lows or rises, this would be a bullish divergence. Since the MFI integrates volume data into it, the divergence between the direction of the indicator and the price could be a leading signal. My preference is to combine these two approaches to trade the money flow index, overbought and oversold levels and divergences, and merge them into one signal, and further filter the signal with a trendline breakout. Here are the steps of this strategy. First, the money flow index must reach an overbought or oversold area at least once on the chart in the recent trading period. I use a 7 period MFI and not the default settings of 14 periods. The 7 period MFI will have an increased sensitivity to produce more signals. The second step, a divergence between the money flow index and the price must occur during the recent period. I prefer to identify the main trend with a 200 period exponential moving average and I only take signals in the direction of the 200 EMA. If the price is trading below 200 EMA, I plan to take only short signals. If the price is trading above it, I take only long signals. Then I search for entries once the price breaks through a recent support or resistance level, a trend line or a channel. As we can observe in this AT&T example, this method offers several valid entries for buy positions as all our conditions were met. Here's our first signal. First, the 200 period EMA was pointing upward, indicating bullish trend. So we will take only buy trades. The MFI reached an oversold area. We have a divergence between the MFI and the price. And the buy signal was confirmed after the trend line was broken to the upside. The second signal appeared here, within the same conditions. And another signal here. Your stop loss should be placed below the recent market swing. And here are two short trades on Netflix. The first signal appeared here. The 200 EMA was pointing downward, indicating a bearish trend so we take only short trades. The MFI reached an overbought area. We have a divergence between the MFI and the price. And the sell signal was confirmed after the trend line was broken. The second signal appeared here, within the same conditions. We have a double top in price, but lower MFI readings, plus the overbought level, and a trendline breakout. Here are other examples of valid trades using the money flow index. Another way in which you could use the money flow indicator is to take signals when the oscillator crosses the 50 level. When money flow index crosses above the 50 level, this signals buying pressure coming into the market. When money flow index crosses below 50, this signals selling pressure. A 50 level crossover using the MFI with a default value of 14 period will offer some good entries but it will also generate many bad trades. The main problem with this method is the market noise it generates and traded by itself, this system is not reliable in the long run. That's why we have to smooth the indicator by calculating it on a longer period. If in a previous strategy I preferred to increase the sensitivity of the MFI, 
by reducing its value to 7. For this approach, I prefer to decrease its sensitivity. And I do this by setting a 50 period for the indicator. We also keep the same filter for determining the trend, namely the 200 period EMA. Here's how it looks like. We added the 200 EMA to estimate the market trend and the 50 period money flow index, planning to take trades when the indicator crosses its 50 center line. Also, don't take my settings for granted. Play with the periods of the MFI and even the period of the exponential moving average and backtest yourself on different time frames to find the best settings suited for your trading style. Here are a few trade examples of MFI centerline crossovers. If you learned something new and found value, leave us a like to show our support and don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell icon to stay notified when we upload new tutorials. Until next time.